Well, this sure does look like a lot of fun, doesn't it? Just hanging from a parachute over the water pool by a boat with friends nearby. But as others have found out, this is not only fun, under the worst conditions, it can kill you. And parasailing has been an attraction for years on our beaches. And that's why there's a push now for a law and regulation of a, uh, what is essentially a non-regulated sport. And as investigative reporter Doug Smith is going to show you now, it's an industry that really doesn't want regulation. Like so many tourists on Clearwater Beach, Sean Ladd and his fiance Alex had come here looking to unwind. We could see the people parasailing on the beach and you know, Alex was really excited about it. She was like, oh, well, I wanna do that. And so they did, without a care in the world. When you think of a business, you think they can't, they can't do this if people are getting hurt. It was September of 2010. Snapshots captured the excitement. And the pictures also show the sky turning dark. They were riding behind this boat, the Sky Screamer. I remember there were just a couple quick gusts of wind and the, the parasail was getting tossed around. Then the line snapped. We just felt like a release and we just quickly ascended in the air and we got just so high up and I just it thought just came out of mine and I blurted it out. Oh my God, we're going to die. They came down and hit the water. Lad fell out of the harness. And I heard her scream behind me, but I figured it just tossed her out as well. But she was still strapped in the harness. Witnesses on the beach watched in horror as the wind blew Alex ashore. She was just dragged extremely fast, at least 35 miles an hour. And then hit this volleyball post. As soon as I got to the beach, I mean, I, I saw her there on the ground, and I thought, you know, she wasn't conscious, but I thought she'd just suck some water in. It was far worse. She never regained consciousness and died six days later. It's horrible to, to, to think it was preventable. Mark McCullough is the founder of the Parasail Safety Council, and he's been retained as an expert witness in the Alex White case. He's been involved in the industry since the 70s and says he invented much of the modern-day equipment. Early on, he thought voluntary regulations would be enough to ensure safety, but not anymore. So you think then that people are going to continue to die? There's no doubt. McCullough estimates since he began tracking parasailing in the early 80s, there have been 429 serious accidents, including 72 deaths, more than a dozen fatalities in Florida, five since just 2001. The most recent, David Saratsky, who drowned parasailing off Longboat Key last summer. McCullough says he's been retained as an expert witness in that case, as well as the Alex White case and every single parasailing death over the past 30 years. I can tell you, every one of them, it's the same question comes up. Where, where did it fail? What went wrong? Why is my loved one dead? I mean, it's, I lived through their tragedies. I mean, every single one of them. And he also can't explain why, throughout the U.S., the parasailing industry is still largely unregulated. Why no state or federal agency inspects or certifies the equipment. And why operators don't need a special license. Parasailing boats are certified by the Coast Guard, but McCullough says... It can be deceiving. And they'll get a seal saying that they're Coast Guard certified. But that's just for the, the number of passengers. That has nothing to do with the parasailing operations. Is parasailing safe? If, if you looked at the number of parasail hours in the loft, and look at the number of people who parasail, yeah, parasailing is very safe. Larry Medic runs the Water Sports Industry Association. A few years ago, his organization opened up to parasail operators. The overwhelming majority of our members uh, want to run a safe, secure operation for their guests. They don't want anybody to get hurt. And parasail operators who have voluntarily gathered over the years echo that. They want to avoid problems. But we ran into one last week trying to videotape the Sky Screamer. We're on public property. Yes, I'm on. Operators appeared annoyed by our presence. Well, I don't understand what the hassle is. Their insurance company settled a civil lawsuit. The terms? Confidential, and there was no admission of any wrongdoing. State lawmakers recently tried to step in and force new safety regulations. But like every other piece of parasailing legislation introduced over the past five years, it went nowhere. There's obviously a problem. There's a problem, and I don't pretend to understand why bills fail, but they do. Medic says he's using some of the ideas and language in the latest bill to create national standards for parasailing. But McCullough believes voluntary or even mandatory regulations at this point 
won't be enough. I'm convinced now that without equipment changes, you cannot regulate yourself out of fatalities. It's just not going to happen. For Sean Ladd, a fatal ending cut short an expected long romance with the love of his life, marriage, and dreams of starting a family together. It's just like a light switch, you know, on and it's off. It's like an hour ago she was here, and now she's not. I mean, I'll never, never get to, you know, have anything with her. And there's a divide over what's the safest equipment to use. Mark McCullough thinks he has the answer with a gondola chair instead of a harness. But one thing that both sides agree on, John, don't go up if the weather is bad. Yeah, you'd think everybody would know that, that by now. Yeah. How about these paracel operations? How many are there in the state of Florida? Well, it's very big in this state, John. Between a, a 70 and 120, it fluctuates depending on the time of year. Florida has more parasail operators than any other place in the world. So you're right, it's very big here. And you know, one of the issues I have with your friend Mr. Medic here is that everything is safe until an accident happens, a gun or a car, but in this case, there's nobody to enforce the law and we have no law. So what are the chances of getting a law passed in Tallahassee and why is it such an issue? Well, it's such an issue because everybody can't get on the same page at this point. It's going to be a tough road to get a law passed. Everybody agrees that something needs to be done to make parasailing safer. The question is, what is that something? And not anybody can agree on what that should be. Should it be equipment? Should it be regulations? And what should those regulations be? This will be an issue I think that they'll be after for a while, John. Well, it's a very popular thing I know at the beach. A lot of people like to do it. Sure. We know there's a danger to it. And uh, obviously there's a problem we got to deal with here in Florida. Thank you very much, Doug. Okay.